Take this off too. Okay. Well, welcome everyone, and thank you for listening to Back Talk by Successful Black Parenting Magazine, the podcast talk show for parents. I'm Janice Robinson Celeste, your host and publisher of Successful Black Parenting Magazine. I want you to tell all of your friends and followers about the show. So go to our Facebook page for Successful Black Parenting and share the link with your followers right now and let people know you are joining us even better. You can click the options and start a watch party. That's what I'm about to do. So in addition to the watch party, you can comment because we love comments on Facebook directly. And I will post the best comments on air and know that it can take a while for your questions to populate in the backstage area. So ask any questions early. Don't wait. Our hashtag for the show is backdoor. Now, it will soon be August already. Wow. The summer's already about to be over, and the end of August is National Black Breastfeeding Week. So today we have on the show Crystal Duhani from Milky Mama. She is a registered nurse, an international board-certified lactation consultant, and a breastfeeding mommy of two. Aw. Now, after having her second child and returning to work, Crystal struggled with her milk supply and realized that there were very few resources for breastfeeding mothers in the same predicament. So she knew then she had to come up with a solution that would help to increase her milk supply and Milky Mama was born. Welcome, Crystal. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, I'm glad you could join us, guys. We, we're running a little late. I have to address that because we had some technical difficulties. Now, we on our end, our, we're using a new platform. So it's very similar to our other platform. But for some reason, we had some um, difficulties bringing Crystal in. So hopefully we can work that out in the future. So let's get back to breastfeeding. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that mothers exclusively breastfeed infants until at least six months of age. Mm -hmm. um, I breastfed my daughters up until at least six months of age, one to 18 months of age. But okay. let's talk about the benefits of breastfeeding your baby. Crystal, why breastfeeding over formula? Um, you know, it's really not breastfeeding over formula. I hate to make that comparison because, you know, there are happy, healthy babies that are formula fed as well. So whatever you choose to feed your baby, you're an amazing parent and you can be shamed or support. You should always be supported for that. Um, but breastfeeding, the benefits of breastfeeding, you just can't deny the science behind it. Um, breastfeeding has been proven to prevent lots of diseases, help boost um, infants immunity, uh, help also helps mothers by decreasing their um, postpartum weight, so it helps them lose weight a little bit faster. It also helps prevent or prevent any instances of cancer in both baby and mom, which I think is super exciting. Um, studies show that the longer mom breastfeeds her baby, that the less risk um, that both her and her baby have of developing breast cancer in the future. That goes for, for male infants too. So whether you're male or female, you still get those benefits. Um, and we're still learning so much more about breastfeeding, especially now during this time where we're dealing with the pandemic and, and things where they're actually studying breast milk right now to see if they can use it as a potential treatment to help fight the um, coronavirus. Right. Well, this one mom says she can wait breastfeeding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah. So gaining weight while breastfeeding is normal. Um, usually when we are breastfeeding, our bodies are so smart. They know that we need to have enough calories to feed our babies. A lot of times, as a new mom, I experienced the same thing. A lot of times you want to kind of get back to your pre-pregnancy weight right away. So you may be um, maybe cutting some calories and because your body is trying to feed another human, it's gonna conserve everything that it can, which instead of cutting those calories will actually make you conserve and hold on to weight. So it's usually better to just eat the recommended amount of calories for a breastfeeding mom, which is about 1800 calories at least, um, and let your body do the work and don't worry so much about losing all that um, pre-pregnancy weight, it'll fall off later. Wow. Well, you know, research I found um, online said that breastfed babies also face a lower risk of developing ear, respiratory, and, or digestive tract infections, asthma, obesity, and diabetes. Yes. And, um, and also, this is the one that really took me out, no joke, 
that they are smarter too. And I, I can attest to that. I, I believe that to be true. They said, um, there's a study that says the cognitive benefits to breastfeeding is that um, at, for at least a year though, you have to do it for at least a year are significantly more intelligent um, children and they grow to be more intelligent adults and they earn more money. That Ooh. this whole study shows this. Now the, now, the findings, they fit in with many other studies that show breastfeeding helps to develop um, uh, you know, their brain as they grow and, mm -hmm. and um, it helps with you know, uh, nutrition so that their brain develops better. Um, and like I said, I've seen children who have been breastfed that just are brilliant as well as, of course, I've seen some brilliant uh, formula fed children, but they are showing that these studies actually are, are leaning toward breastfeeding for better cognitive development. And I found that to be a big surprise. Yeah, I think that that's really, really um, amazing. I mean, I, I think that it also, there's so many other factors that go into intelligence and brain development as you both, as you, you know, as you know, um, I was formula fed and I think I turned out okay. <laughs> so um, I think that it really, you know, I think that we know as a, as a world and research tells us that breast milk is the best um, choice or the best food for human babies, but there are some indications or some instances where that's not possible, um, which is why donor milk and other things are so important too. Absolutely. Um, and I'm getting a lot of moms, which I'm cracking up over here. They're gaining weight, breastfeeding, they're hungry like ever. Like you said, those yeah. calories are important to hold on to. So that I'm just cracking up at some of these comments that are coming in. Yeah. And it's true. I mean, uh, you, you have to be healthy and make sure you have those calories so that you can feed your baby. Yeah. Uh, and you know, if you notice, if you notice, breastfed babies have those little chunky thighs <laughs> <laughs> that we love so much. We love yeah. those chunky thighs. So, yeah, so I, you know, we have to, you know, uh, talk a little bit about um, black women as mm -hmm. successful black parenting and um, how things have changed because one of the things as black women, we were once the leaders kind of in breastfeeding. I mean, even during um, slavery, we had to be wet nurses, right? Yeah. For the um, master children. And, and um, I've seen pictures online of um, a wet black wet nurse with the white baby in one arm, black um, child in the other. They weren't allowed to switch breasts or they'd be whipped allegedly to according to these sayings. Um, and, you know, so we were kind of experts because we had to, right? We had to nurse our children. That's how they got nourishment. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't have the option of formula back then. And now today, when it comes to breastfeeding our children, uh, we found that the studies are showing 85% of white mothers breastfeed, which is great, but only 69% of black mothers breastfeed their babies. How did we go from experts to catching up now? Oh, that's a, that's a, a <laughs> question. Um, so when we go back to those slavery days, a lot of the times, you know, um, we, our ancestors were forced to breastfeed the, their own children that may have been, you know, conceived out of, um, sexual assault from their slave owners. And it really created this deep rooted trauma. Oftentimes they would have to feed someone else's baby um, while neglecting their own. Um, and it just created this negative connotation within the black community in the African-American community of breastfeeding. And that gets passed down from generation to generation. When you combine that with lower resources and just a lower overall support system in the black community, specifically within the healthcare field, then it just creates just these barriers and these racial um, disparities when it comes to breastfeeding. You know, they did a study about how physicians and healthcare providers actually, they, this is an actual study that you can read that they have acknowledged and, um, and confessed that they, undermine or dismiss the complaints of black women in when they present to the ER. And that really translates into the healthcare as a whole. So a lot of times black breastfeeding mothers, if they go to their physician and ask, hey, you know, I need help breastfeeding, the chances that they would refer them to a lactation consultant may not be so high um, when we're talking about potentially other races, um, just because that stigma is there. Right. And I found what you just said to be true when I did my research for this podcast today. Um, racism and biases actually play into this because at hospitals that even serve 
a large black population, they are less likely to help black women initiate breastfeeding after giving birth or even offer lactation support. And this, this is according to a CDC study. Exactly. Um, and that hospitals uh, will automatically offer black babies formula instead of yep. their own mother's milk. Like they don't even offer them the option to think about it, you know? So as a lactation consultant, what else have you found? Have you found anything else that might contribute to this discrepancy? I think also, like I mentioned before, like the generational trauma, like these things get passed mm -hmm. down from generation to generation. So when your family members or your you know, mother or your grandmother and so on didn't breastfeed, it's not something that's seen in the community or seen as normal. I remember breastfeeding my babies and my family didn't largely breastfeed. A, a couple of us did. Um, it's becoming more normal as the generations occur. But I was breastfeeding my three month old and some of my family members were like, oh, you need to cover up or, oh, you're still breastfeeding that baby. And I'm like, he's three months. So the education and just the support um, from from previous generations just isn't quite there on the way. And we're hoping that that changes as generations go on and as people become more educated and as more black women see other black women breastfeeding, which is another reason why we need so many, you know, black healthcare workers and black birth workers and black lactation consultants so that we can see that there is support for us from people that look like us. Right, and I agree. Um... I, I had the same thing. I'm glad you addressed that, that, you know, the older generation will actually try to um, make you feel bad about it, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I remember nursing my daughter until she was 18 months old and people were like, you're still nursing the baby. Just like you said, she mm -hmm. can talk and walk. She don't need to be um, nursing. They yeah. probably said that nicely, but <laughs> you know, she doesn't need to be nursing. <laughs> so yes, I, I, I agree about that. And also um, black women, we have to return to work. And I had to t go to work when my uh, one of my daughters was six weeks old and killed me. And I was still nursing and I would run, at, well not run, but drive as fast as I can to get to the daycare so I can nurse on my lunch break, pump in between. And that was at six weeks old. Yeah. So a lot of us have to go back earlier than 12 weeks and we're confronted with the inflexible work hours that make nursing and pumping almost impossible. It yeah. really does. It's really so, the thing is, oh, and I have to mention, one of our guests said, empower pumping. Oh, Lord, I hated that. <laughs> pump. <laughs> pumping is a labor of love. So, you know, for all you pumping mamas out there, I, I, oh, yeah. I, I feel you. <laughs> so so why is all of this important? Why is it important, um, especially to moms who want to breastfeed? Because there are moms out there who are having trouble or can't breastfeed too. But why is this all so important, especially in our community? You know, I think it's so important because it's important to know that there is support, that there are places that you can go. And and I think that kind of is one of the big issues is that not only is there a lack of support, or maybe we may not know where can we go because nobody tells us these things, you know, because it's just assumed that black women don't breastfeed. So it's so, so important because black babies are dying at higher rates than any other race. Black women are dying during childbirth at, than any other race. Um, and so it's really important that we change those statistics. Um, and we can do the best that we can ourselves, but it also comes down to changing things on a higher level, changing things just as a culture, as a society, um, within the healthcare field, within you know the political field, everything really needs to change to make sure that everyone is getting the support that they need. Absolutely. Because uh, like you said, the infant mortality rate is is twice, I think, is as twice as high than as white babies. Mm -hmm. um, and that uh, women, uh, black women give birth prematurely 14% more than white women. Yeah. And there's this author, several books on breastfeeding, her name is Seals Allers. Oh, and really? she, oh, yeah. you know her. oh yeah, she says, <laughs> she says that educating all mothers about the value and practice of breastfeeding could reverse some of these trends and that black women have babies born too small and too soon. And those babies are the ones that need the breast milk the most. Yes. So I, I love that her quote about that. 
Now, here's the thing. All of you guys that are listening out there, did you all know that Congress passed a law in 2010, 10 years ago, that gave mothers the right to have a reasonable break times um, to express breast milk for up to one year? It's called the Break Time for Nursing Mothers Law. I had no idea, and I am assuming that if I didn't even know that, a lot of other moms that are out there didn't know they have rights, right? So um, I, I just wanted to make sure we announced it on this show because we're here to help you to thrive. So there we go. We have one person right here said they didn't know. Yes. So you have a right. It's a law. It is a federal law. The difference, though, between federal and state is that federal law, of course, is federal law, but every state has their own laws. Um, and, you know, it might be difficult for you to go and to the Supreme Court and say, hey, they're not supporting my right to pump, um, unfortunately. Um, every state, almost all states have a pumping law for moms at work, but some states unfortunately don't. Some states are still lacking that protection, um, which is really, really sad. But um, we have a new program that's called the Moms at Work program where we actually work with your employer to help not only educate them on these laws, we also help them help you by providing support to lactation consultants and and a, a clean place to pump so moms aren't pumping in bathrooms or storage closets. Um, you know, there's so much that needs to be changed. There's so much work that needs to be done. I think it's really important for every mom, if they're planning to go back to work, to educate themselves on their state's, state laws. If they need help, they can reach out to us um, and make sure that they're advocating for themselves too and knowing their rights. Because you can know your rights, but if you don't advocate for yourself, um, then it kind of goes by the wayside. And again, I'm just going to put it up on the screen. It's called Break Time for Nursing Mothers Law. Yes. So yes. you guys That's need to know about that. Yeah. So even if you want to have your partner or someone bring your baby to the office to, to breastfeed, that's covered under, under that too. It's not just to pump. So depending on what your situation is. Well, that's fantastic. Now you guys know. Now you know, when you go back to work after COVID, you have a right to pump. Yes. Um, and this one says, I'm a grandmother, but wow, if all moms knew, tell them all about it. I'm a grandmom too. So I'm not going to be nursing anytime soon, but you know, you know, you can tell everyone, you know, um, so this, this, I mean, this is a comment that's interesting. This uh, person also said, my lactation consultant told me to give my seven month baby a chicken bone to suck on in midst of a nursing strike. I never heard that. And my daughter never latched again. She said it was because the food was more interesting. Now you're a lactation mm -hmm. consultant. Is that strange? That's yeah. odd. That's, that's, <laughs> it's odd. Yeah. I would never, you know, um, if your baby is going through a nurse, nursing strike, you definitely don't recommend, I wouldn't recommend replacing that with a chicken bone. I would recommend making sure that you get back to basics, skin to skin, doing things to encourage baby to nurse, but not force because we don't want to make any you know, stressful situations and just be patient with baby. Usually nursing strikes are temporary. They usually only last a couple of days to a week at the most. And it could be because uh, maybe your baby is going through like a teething or something. So the sneeze. Whew. Okay. No, I don't. <laughs> baby might be teething or maybe baby is going through a growth spurt or maybe baby has a cold or something that just is making it uncomfortable to nurse. So just be patient and be supportive and see if there's anything else going on and avoid chicken bones. <laughs> okay. Well, no chicken bones, you guys, you heard this here. Okay. So <laughs> now we know breastfeeding is important, especially for black mothers today, but it's not always easy to do for many, you know? So we have lactation consultants like yourself for a reason. What are some of the difficulties that new moms might have with breastfeeding? And this one person here said that, it was latching was an issue. Mm. So what else have you seen? Latching is a big issue. Um, a lot of parents don't know um, what's normal and what's not. Um, and that's also in the black community as well. Like a, a lot of parents that begin breastfeeding or that may be considering breastfeeding hear how painful it is or say breastfeeding hurts so bad. And that's a turnoff. Um, when in reality, you should, it's, it's normal to be to sore and tender, but you shouldn't have this toe curling pain. Your nipples shouldn't be bleeding or cracking. None of that is normal. And if we don't know that and we just suffer through it, then not only does it make breastfeeding very difficult, but it also creates this negative you know, experience for breastfeeding, which is not what we want. Um, latching, milk supply is one of the largest concerns, of course. 
um, and overall support and, and education. Um, I think with with proper support and education, everything else will fall into place. Fantastic. Now, I just want to show um, this one comment here, which is funny <laughs> to me, this person. I have big boobs. Is, is it possible to smother a baby while nursing? I was always so paranoid about that. No, you know, the size of your breast doesn't affect um, <laughs> breastfeeding. You may need to make some adjustments in positioning, but the size of your breast really shouldn't interfere with that. If you have larger breasts, um, your baby is really just latching onto your breast tissue. And so your, your actual like the meat of your breast per se, or your, or your breast tissue should not cover your baby's nose if your baby is latched properly. So if you're concerned that your baby, that your breast tissue is kind of occluding baby's airway, then it's very likely that you need to readjust um, baby's latch. Okay. Now you have several products on your website that um, helps parents or moms, I should say specifically, <laughs> with their milk supply and keeping it flowing strong. Can you tell us about a few of your favorite products that you have on your website? Yeah, so we have a wide variety of products. Um, the oatmeal chocolate chip lactation cookie is definitely my favorite because it's my baby. It's the first product I created when I was breastfeeding um, my daughter after she was born. Um, we also have brownies, which are um, what we're known for, our emergency brownies are definitely our most popular product. Uh, that's our signature product. Um, but we also have a line of herbal supplements for those that don't want to eat cookies and brownies all day. I understand that. And we have drinks as well, um, lemonade mixes and, and milky melon and power pump. I'm sorry, and pumping um, pump and punch, which is a drink mix that you just mix in water and you can take that on the go. Um, we also have an amazing support system. So in addition to our products, we have breastfeeding courses that you can take online. We have a breastfeeding support group. We have access to lactation consultants. Um, there's so many other services that we have to help support you from all angles um, on your breastfeeding journey. Well, thank you. I just went to your website here and showed uh, everyone who's watching um, all the different products. And I just love how beautiful everything's packaged oh. and how how attractive the website <laughs> is. So thank you. Congratulations. And thank you for doing that. I think yeah. um, what you're doing is not only need it, but you're doing it in such a lovely way that it just is very attractive for especially women to come to your site and to purchase your products. And I'm assuming they all taste really good, right? Oh, yeah, they do. They all taste <laughs> absolutely delicious. Um, and that's what was really important to me. You know, when I was breastfeeding, I tried other supplements out there to help support my milk production before I started my company and everything just kind of tasted kind of yucky. I just wanted to make sure I wanted to enjoy what I was consuming. So it's really important to me that everything tastes really good. Okay. So, um, we have another question. What about drinking alcohol and pumping? What are the rules about that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Always like a, a taboo topic. It, it, in all honesty, it's your personal decision. Um, and the only people that might have an issue with it is society. Um, but in actuality, the amount of alcohol that's transferred into your breast milk is very, very minimal. So pumping and dumping isn't necessary. Or does it even do anything. So if you drink alcohol, the alcohol is still in your bloodstream, which means it's still in your breast milk. So if you pump and dump, but there's still alcohol in your bloodstream, it's still in your breast milk. So you just wasted a bunch of milk for no reason. Of course, the safest thing to do is to not drink at all while breastfeeding. But if you choose to, um, you don't have to dump your milk. If you aren't comfortable with giving your baby the milk, then you can use it for a milk bath. You can make breast milk jewelry. There's tons of fun things you can do with it. You can also dilute it with milk maybe that you pumped when you weren't drinking to help um, decrease or minimize any effects of alcohol, if there are any. Um, or what you can also do, which is going to sound really silly and people are going to look at you like you're absolutely crazy, but if the best thing to do is to actually kind of drink while you're breastfeeding, if you're going to do that, because it takes a while for your body to process and metabolize the alcohol. So if you're breastfeeding at the same time, your baby's getting nothing. People are going to look at you crazy. Um, but if that's what you choose to do, then that's another option as well. But it really is just a personal decision. Of course, again, the safe 
safest thing uh, the safest thing to do is to avoid drinking while breastfeeding but um, we we do have to address that we know that there are parents that do and without having the proper information about it um, can really cause other issues if you're not educated and they have to hide and do things without really knowing what's necessary and what's appropriate wow that visual of yeah. is just, I know. Yeah, yeah you're gonna get yeah definitely a right. lot of side eyes yeah <laughs> Right. Okay. So that segue nicely into this next question, because we we know the benefits about breastfeeding your child, but what are some of the things that no one tells you about and what to expect? For instance, you know, pumping and dumping, and uh, yeah. we know one of the pros is bonding with your baby. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the cons? Some of the cons of breastfeeding. Some yeah. Cons of breastfeeding would be um, maybe everyone's pain tolerance is different. And if you don't have a proper latch, um, it can be painful and you can get nipple damage, which is really important for you to have the support and education um, in the beginning to make sure that your latch is appropriate. Um, if your baby isn't able to latch properly or your milk supply is suffering, there is also a possibility that your baby may not get enough milk, which is again, another reason why if you're having issues to make sure that you get those checked very um, early. Um, pumping is no fun for some people. It's it's definitely a labor of love. So sometimes that can be time consuming if you're hooked up to a pump every two hours. Um, what else? <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, God bless you. Um, what else is a con? There aren't many cons of breastfeeding. I can't think of any more. Well, this um, one wrote the, uh, this one person wrote the afterbirth pain. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yes, when you breastfeed and, and the, the oxytocin is what helps you snap back, basically, as you like to call it, it helps your uterus, your uterus contract back to its, its normal size. And that can feel, some people describe it as period-like cramps and some people describe it as like full-on contractions. Yes, no one talks about that. Um, that was a good one. And it seemed to get worse with each child because I had three and I nursed each one. And it was the first one, I think probably because the uterus does maybe doesn't have to go back as far because it's not stretched. Yeah, maybe. Exactly. But then the second one, I was like, oh, and the third one, I was bent over like, mm -hmm. oh, my God. And I was going yeah. to like match her off, you know, like so it was so painful. But yeah, yeah so that was a good one. Also leaking, too. Um, no one really about you know, <laughs> out and about, and you, you hear a baby cry. It may not even be your baby, but just that mental connection with babies crying might make you leak. And if you're not wearing any breast pads or things, you could leak through your clothing, and that could be a little embarrassing, I guess. Um, also, breastfeeding in public. Um, while I never really had a problem with it, it can make a lot of people uncomfortable. Maybe they're just not comfortable with the logistics of it, or or, or they just feel a little modest. And, and breastfeeding in public is causes some anxiety for them. So that could be an issue too. All of those are great. Um, I think the one thing that I had said, I wish people had told me so I could be ready for this was that for me, and I, I'm not sure, I don't think it happens to everyone, but probably a good amount of people are the dro droopy flat breasts that came yeah. after nursing permanently stopped. I was like, what happened? You know, so mommy makeovers are good, you know, <laughs> they work. A lot of that is genetics. Um, a lot of women, you know, like I know for me, when before I had kids, I had like a nice perky B cup. Now that I have had two children that are breastfed, they're a D's and they haven't gone down. So, you know, in, in some cases, I'm like, okay. <laughs> I heard that. I'm that was that was so envious of that. So that's amazing. Now that's great. I'm glad that works for some people. So yeah, so those are some of the cons. So you guys heard it here. So if no one's telling you and they're just telling you the benefits, which are great, know yeah. to be ready for some of the cons. And you know, leakage and all of that, leakage is real. Like that, that can be it can be super embarrassing. And you you know, sometimes don't even know what's happening. Sometimes you do because you can feel it, but other times you just look down, and you're like <laughs> so, um, but it's part of it. Sex drive. Um, the hormones that are, that are associated with breastfeeding can also decrease your libido or decrease your sex drive or cause some vaginal dryness, which is no fun either. Um, nobody talks about those things either because you know, women we don't talk about what's going on with their bodies. So, but that's important to know too. That's, that's good to know. No, that's good to know. So. Tell people how they can find Milky Mama, because I think we're going to get a lot of interest um, for Milky Mama products after this show. So tell us how we find you. 
You can find us at www.milky-mama.com um, on our website. You can also find us on Instagram at Milky Mama LLC and Facebook at Milky Mama One. Um, you can also email us if you have any breastfeeding questions. You can call our 800 number at 877-88-MILKY and one of our lactation consultants can answer breastfeeding questions that you have. We have an amazing breastfeeding support group called the Milky, the official Milky Mama Lactation Support Group. Um, our goal and our passion is really just to, to provide access in a variety of ways to lactation consultants so that wherever you are, you can reach somebody that can answer a breastfeeding question for you. All right. Thank you, Crystal. And before you go, one more question, because I think this is a good one. We have so many questions and they're all good. Thank you, Denise. I appreciate that. Um, does cabbage work for cl clogged ducts? Now I heard that before, like you put cold cabbage on your, your, your breast. What's that about? So the cold cabbage, some studies report that the enzymes in the cabbage can help decrease inflammation. Um, usually it's used for, if you have an oversupply, if you're engorged, it will help potentially decrease your supply. So if you have a clogged duct, I wouldn't recommend cabbage. Instead, I would recommend, um, massage. So massaging the area, warmth vibration, anything you have at home that vibrates, like a toothbrush or whatever, you can put that over the area to help dislodge the clog. Um, nursing and pumping routinely and or pumping if you're not pumping. Um, and also you wanna get to the root cause. If you're getting clogged ducts because your flanges are the wrong size or you're wearing like a tight bra that's putting a lot of pressure on your breasts or baby has a bad latch, if we don't fix that underlying issue, those clogged ducts are just gonna keep coming back. Interesting. I didn't know about that part. Well, thank you guys. Thank you all. Um, but Crystal, I want to thank you for coming on Back Talk today to talk about breastfeeding and your products. And I want to thank you all for participating and listening to Back Talk, asking great, great questions. And um, I I'm just so glad you guys all joined in this live stream in our podcast talk show because it's both. We always do both the live, live stream and the podcast. But if you miss part of the show, no worries. You can just wait a few minutes and click the replay of this podcast, share it with anyone who needs to hear it, and let's get the word out. Now, I broadcast every Saturday at 11 a.m. That's Pacific time. I think it's 2 p.m. Eastern time, but I will be taking the next two Saturdays off. So make sure you visit our replays on Anchor, Spotify, iTunes, Android, and more. And I'll be back on August 29th with the Olympic World and U.S. National Champion Track and Field Sprinter, Natasha Hastings, to discuss being a, a mompreneur and about co-parenting. So go to our Facebook page at Black Parenting One and sign up for the, the notifications so you don't miss when we go live again. And one more thing, don't forget to follow us too. We are on Facebook and on Twitter as Black Parenting One. We are on um, Instagram and, and uh, our website is SuccessfulBlackParenting.com. You can find us on Instagram at, um, sorry, at Instagram, I'm ah, messing up, tongue tied. Sorry, Successful Black Parenting on Instagram and Black Parenting One on Facebook and Twitter. So our website is full of great content at SuccessfulBlackParenting.com and that it will help you to be the best successful parent you can be. Don't forget to rate our podcast. And until next time, I wish you all the best and much success. Take care.